Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back to talk about why we can't trust that the parts from one Select Tech dumbbell will automatically fit another Select Tech dumbbell. Uh, it doesn't make a difference if it's OEM or knockoff. This applies to all of them. And in past videos, I've showed examples of how these dumbbells can differ. Um, the only way that you're going to even get exposed to this is in my situation where I'm exposed to a few thousand of these dumbbells with my customers uh, and also the several pairs that I have here at home. Uh, normally, if you only have one pair of dumbbells, you're not really going to see this problem unless you go online and buy spare parts and those spare parts happen to not fit automatically on your dumbbells. It's not because, you know, the person who parted out the dumbbells sold you something necessarily that was bad or was the wrong model. In many cases, those sellers aren't aware that these dumbbells aren't all identical. And there's no way for them to, to know if this disc will fit your dumbbell or if this disc will fit your dumbbell other than the model, right? So if they took this off a of 552 Series 1, they're going to assume that it fits all 552 Series 1 with no problems. Same thing here with the 552 Series 2. That's just not the case. Because of manufacturing differences, wear and tear, damage, these may not perfectly fit yours and vice versa. And so I've talked about it in the past a little bit. I looked at the differences of a disc, uh, the differences on the weight plate thicknesses. Uh, even here, right in front of me, I have two 552 Series 1 discs. They're both OEM, but they are different. Uh, this one, which you can see the Nautilus branding on, uh, actually has no ribs. And it has hollow cavities here inside the lip, which is really crazy. I can't believe that they would do that. As it is, this solid lip is not strong enough. And in this case, they chose to hollow it out. And you can kind of see the crazy damage that can happen to that thin wall when you hollow out a piece of plastic like that. So I'm, that's a kind of a unusual design decision for something that is a safety feature of your dumbbells. But anyway, you can see same model, slight differences. Even these lugs, if you were to use a micrometer uh, or a um, vernier caliper to measure these lugs, you'd find that there are slight differences in the thickness of the lugs. So anyway, what I've chosen to do here in this video is I have several OEM discs from 552 Series 1 and 2. In addition, I have several of the inner steel discs, and I've numbered them, uh, one through five. And we're going to step through and show you how these discs fit with not just each other, but also with these steel plates. And you're going to see that they don't all fit the way that they should. In addition, I've also picked up four um, printed discs to show what happens when the folks making these rely on these kinds of models for their parts. So now you have not just the original design differences, but you have design differences plus variability due to 3D printing. And so these don't all consistently fit with the different parts from different dumbbells. So Let's start here by moving these discs aside. I'm going to take these five. We'll start with number one. And this I would call the gold standard. This is a relatively new, completely undamaged uh, inner steel disc. This is the what would probably be the ideal fit for most of you out there who own a relatively new or undamaged pair of 552 Series 1 or 2, your disc will probably look like this. You know, it's not going to have kind of that older, dulled finish necessarily. It's certainly not going to have, if you can see here, the stretching, the damage on that inner thin piece of metal. 
uh, it's not going to have that. You know, this this is a beautiful, you know, relatively new part. So this is the gold standard in fit. And I say that because no matter which one of these uh, OEM discs we put in here, you can see they fit beautifully. So here's another one. Here's yet another one. Doesn't make a difference, by the way, if it's um, 552 Series 1 or 2, because their inner steel discs are the same. And here's that funky one, but still same situation. You know, beautiful fit. Now let's put number one aside and try number two. So we'll randomly grab one of these. And you can kind of see here, it doesn't want to quite go in. I have to push on this disc and kind of push it on to try to get it to fit better. And even then, it isn't quite fitting the way it should. You can actually see it better here that the disc is tilted like this, it won't go in on one side fully. So it's kind of cocked to one side. Let's try another one. Now this one's even worse. So this doesn't really want to go in at all. So I can't get those discs, uh, lugs, to go in to that inner disc at all. Try another one. And okay, so this one, that lug popped in. And oh, you can kind of see it wants to pop in only on one lug at a time. I can get one lug here, or I can get that one lug, but not that one. I can maybe get that. Nope, can't get that large lug to pop in. So basically, this one doesn't want to fit more than one lug at a time into this disc. Now, that's on disc two. We can keep doing this all day. I'm not going to bore you with, you know, going through a, uh, 20 of these. But the point is that some of the wear and tear and damage on these things cause an issue with being able to fit a disc that uh, did not come with your dumbbells. And because when this thing got crushed, it very likely crushed the lug on the original piece. So of course yours fit, right? Yours was crushed while it was sitting inside its disc. And now you take that part out, you go to replace it with a fresh one that has not been crushed here, and you're trying to fit it into a disc that now is deformed right there. And that's pretty common. This is on older 552 Series 1 and 2. I can show you these all day long. Uh, in addition to the deformities, the damage that happens to some of these plates, you also have the knockoffs. Now, in this case, number five is, you can see it's completely, it's a different uh, style. This is much more like the 1090. Uh, this is the kind of cutout you'll see on an OEM 1090 steel disc. But on knockoffs it and on older 552 Series 2s OEM, you will see this on those. And it differs from pretty much all the rest that use this three-slot style. And, um, uh, and of course, the difference in the skinny teeth wide width versus kind of uh, an evenly, you know, wide tooth, wide uh, notch on these other discs. But what I want to show you is, again, the fit of the discs on these um, uh, plates. Now, I'm going to start here with this knockoff disc that came with this 552. So this shipped with this. And you can see, by design, the lugs differ. 
you can see that these lugs use a step and they're thinner lugs. The thickness from one from the inside to the outside is different than on the rest of the OEM disc. These are a much thicker lug. So when you put this in the steel plate, you know, you get the fit that you would expect with this particular. Now, again, not all knockoffs and not all older 552 Series 2s are going to be identical to this. They differ. But for this specific one, you can see that the fit is what you would expect. However, take that disc out and use another 552 Series disc and try to fit it. And you can see now that it does not want to fit in the, the uh, lug pattern here. So these would need to be slightly modified in order to fit this replacement disc into this particular plate in order to get these two to fit together. And I ran into that problem, by the way, when I've got some of mine here. And I ran into that problem last year where I had originally designed for the gold standard and for some of these damaged uh, disc, uh, inner discs. And I'll show you an example here. When I originally designed, you know, I wanted that beautiful fit. But I quickly realized that, you know, some of them fit better than others. So this is a nice, still a nice fit. Let's try number two disc. Two discs still fits nicely. Let's try number four. Four fits nicely. Now let's try this one. And you can see here that it is not fitting exactly the way that we would expect. We would have to take a little bit of material off of here, just as we would off of here to get it to fit this particular plate. So, you know, when I made my own lugs, I tried to make them fit as many things as possible. I wanted, you know, I didn't want a situation where you go to put your disc into a damaged, a damaged uh, inner disc and you can't quite fit it in there. I needed mine to fit as many as possible. And so I made the lugs a little bit smaller to try to fit as many as possible. But in doing so, I also had to realize that now for everybody with this kind of beautiful new, you know, they just bought their Bowflex or they have only had them for a few years and their plates are still in amazing shape. The challenge with something like that is then it ends up being a little loose. So, you know, I had to go back and design the discs to fit better for the majority of people. But in doing that, in doing that, I have a trade-off. And that trade-off is that it's going to have difficulty fitting stuff that is a little bit more damaged and not um, the usual. So it's true of the OEM discs. It's true of trying to create discs that fit all the different kinds of, uh, you know, dumbbells that are out there, especially these older 552 Series 2s and knockoffs. But also, it's true of the 3D printed discs. So let me remove some of these. This is four 3D printed discs purchased off of eBay sellers. And they have the same issues. <clears throat> because they were designed for a specific lug, whatever 
uh, model these guys may have found online, uh, they are going to have the same fitment issues. So it's not that the guys necessarily, you know, did a horrible job. Uh, it's that the model itself is uh, of certain dimensions and that that may not perfectly fit these uh, inner discs if the discs have been worn or damaged in some unusual way. So you can see here that, you know, this 3D printed disc is not going to fit into all three lugs there. And same thing here. Let's see, one sec here. So you can see here, this one also doesn't want to go in to the slots on this disc. Yet, on the gold standard, let's see. Well, this one doesn't want to even go into gold standard. So this one, this one actually has dimensional issues beyond the uh, ones I mentioned earlier. There's probably something wrong with the print itself. But, you know, some of these 3D printed will, f will fit. Let's see. Okay, that one won't. That sucks. Uh, how about this one? Ah, there we go. <laughs> so, so whoever printed this one, you know, they did a pretty good job. They printed something that actually fits the one, the disc that I was calling the gold standard for fit. Uh, but as you can see, some of these 3D printed discs do not fit even the beautiful, uh, you know, uh, undamaged, unworn inner disc. And so, uh, you know, it, it, the challenge with the, that these guys have is not only are they uh, copying these OEM uh, disc dimensions, but they're doing it with 3D printing, which itself is kind of, it's great if you're printing knickknacks. But if you want to do highly precise parts on a cheap printer, you're going to find that the precision of your parts isn't that great. Uh, they're only capable of a certain level of precision. Uh, you know, when you're doing machining, you can control this down to a, a thousandth, couple thousandths of an inch. Whereas this is going to be several times uh, higher than that. It's going to be, you know, um, uh, or I should say lower, lower precision than, than that. But anyway, uh, my point here is that you cannot trust automatically that just because you went online and purchased a 552 Series 1 disc or a 552 Series 2 disc or an inner steel plate that they will automatically fit the parts that you already own and I want to show you one more example of that that I just recently discovered while making another part a new part that you guys have never seen for these dumbbells so this part I call a locking pin button and the reason is because in this cavity where your locking pin goes, there is a button right there that controls the locking pin movement to engage and disengage on your dumbbells. And let me pop this out. Just take a second here. So we're going to pop out the spring pin that holds this in place hopefully let's see if we can get this thing to come out wow that one's in there really tough let me try this one there we go so take out the spring pin drop out the locking pin uh, button so this button came out of 
that cavity, which is the same as, you know, this button here. And normally you would think that, you know, okay, this is the same as all the OEM, other OEM buttons. So, you know, if you were put them back to back, they look to be about the same width. Put them like this. They look to be approximately the same height, but you can see that they are not the same thickness. This is actually a narrower uh, pin than this one. And as a consequence, <laughs> you can see the difference here. Look at how much wider that pin is. As a consequence, this pin cannot be used in this dumbbell and vice versa. Even though they mostly look very similar. Yes, the slots can change slightly and all that, uh, but they are basically similar looking, same 45 degree face and all of that. So when I made a batch of replacement pins for a bunch of my dumbbells, these are made out of Delrin. Uh, when I made a batch of uh, pins, I made them to match my pins out of my dumbbells. And then when I acquired this dumbbell, a 552 Series 2 knockoff, which my other knockoffs have this kind of pin in white, this size. They basically look like this. But this specific knockoff had the fatter pin. And, or the button, I keep calling these pins, I don't know why, but um, I'm so used to working with the locking pins and not the buttons for the pins. But anyway, the um, uh, this one has a much fatter button. So some knockoffs and most OEMs come with this type of button and usually in this color. Some of the older 552 Series 2s and the 552 Series 2 knockoffs and 1090 knockoffs come with this kind of button, and it's usually in this color, like a white. But you can see here, yet another knockoff comes with a more gray-like button, um, and it's a little fatter and incompatible with these other buttons. So, you know, when I'm making replacement buttons, which by the way, these will become available probably early next year. Uh, they, what ends up happening is that with these buttons, they ride this spring like this, and it eventually wears the inside of this opening and these buttons get very loose and they don't function as well as they should. The other thing that happens is that the face of the button right here, this face ends up getting um, worn. So you'll notice that on some of your buttons, you know, it's not a perfect sharp bevel like that anymore. They start getting a little more rounded and getting caught on the locking pins so they don't work as well over time. So anyway, I'm going to put a fresh set of buttons in mine and I will, when, you know, I'm satisfied that they're all working the way that they need to, I'll make buttons available to all of you. Uh, but having said that, I need to now figure out what other types of buttons are out there. I've encountered this one, but it makes me now wonder how many other types of these buttons exist and what are their dimensions and how do I ident I identify reliably, uh, you know, what someone has so that if they want to purchase buttons like this, that I can send them the correct buttons. You know, not everybody's going to be sitting there at home with, you know, vernier calipers and measuring the thickness of their buttons for me. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I'll need to figure that out and hopefully by uh, next year sometime uh, I'll be able to make replacement buttons available to everyone. But just like with everything else that I've been talking about with these discs and the, fit, the way that they fit, the buttons aren't all manufactured the same. And as a result of that, it means that you cannot just go on a site like eBay, buy a used button, and assume that it will fit your dumbbell. That may not be the case. So, anyway, uh, uh, I think I pretty much covered all the crazy variability of these dumbbells. You get the picture. They're not all identical. You cannot trust that the parts from one will automatically fit the parts from another. And when I design replacement parts, I have to kind of take into account the differences and try to fit as many as possible out of the box. And for those that don't fit out of the box, they require tweaking. And it doesn't make a difference if you're buying, you know, an OEM part that might not fit your dumbbell perfectly, or you're buying one of my parts that for whatever reason doesn't fit your dumbbell perfectly. Uh, you may find yourself having to tweak the parts a little bit in order to make them fit. If I were buying these pins and this showed up in the mail and I need th this pin to be like this one, I would probably just sand this pin down to get these dimensions and rather than going around and, you know, trying to find a seller that knows these dimensions, they're not going to. The guys that sell this stuff on eBay don't know much about it. They can't really answer most of your questions about it because they're just taking these dumbbells apart and selling them. Most of them don't even understand fully how these things work. Uh, what you would need to do is buy the part and then modify the part yourself when you get it in. And, uh, and that's what I would do in this case. If this thing showed up in the mail and I need it to fit this particular part, I just modify this one to fit. Uh, so that's it guys. Um, don't automatically assume that the parts you find online are going to just fit your dumbbells. You may need to uh, tweak some things. Uh, you may uh, want to try to go find another part that maybe fits better. But it is like, in some cases, it's a finding a needle in a haystack, especially if you have dumbbells that have any kind of unusual wear, tear, or damage that is going to affect the fit of parts in that dumbbell. So uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, in an upcoming video, I am going to load test these 3D printed discs. I picked them up to destroy them and uh, show you how they compare to my discs. So in the next video, I will uh, talk more about 3D printed discs and uh, we'll see how they fare in my uh, force gauge. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you have a great day and I will see you all in the next video.